Hi everyone, good morning or afternoon, evening, what time of the day it is, uh, your place. Uh, thanks for joining in on the second day of Advent of Code. Um, today we're going to continue. Uh, we left off yesterday, uh, day one, we completed it in uh, about 35-40 minutes. Um, being the day one, it wasn't too hard. Um, so the story goes that we have been saving Christmas for the five years in a row, which is how long Advent of Code has been running. And this year uh, we're on a uh, trip on a tropical island, uh, holiday trip. And uh, we are attempting to rescue our holiday by uh, collecting uh, stars, which is a form of currency. Um, on this that's being used on this island apparently and uh, we need to collect 50 stars uh, for us to successfully um, rescue our holiday every day uh, we can get two stars so that's 25 days times two and each day consists of two puzzles basically uh, two uh, puzzles that you need to solve and for each one you get a star um, we had to do, uh, yesterday there was, uh, the puzzle was um, using a combination, you, you got an input of about 200 numbers and you had to find the first one, for the first puzzle, you had to find a combination of entries, uh, or so-called expenses, um, that adds up to 2020, and uh, for the second part of day one, you had to find a, a combination of three expenses. That adds up to 2020 and we managed to solve that by um, nothing too fancy just using uh, loops nested loops two of them in the first for the first part and three of them for the second since we got some time over we uh, went in and optimized uh, the first part uh, brought it down by 2.2 milliseconds yeah the input was small so the gains are not that big but uh, we optimized it in a few few ways and uh, yeah, it was fun to do. Let's uh, let's go on with day two and see what this day is about. Uh, if you're in the chat, I'm gonna keep an eye on the chat while doing this. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, have you done this uh, today's challenge before, or uh, and you just come and watch and see how uh, I'm approaching it, or um, uh, you haven't? Let me know. And uh, I'll keep an eye on the chat. Uh, if I'm stuck, I'm going to also be asking for help. So feel free to chime in and give me some tips. Uh, we're doing this together after all. Okay, day two. Uh, the story goes, password philosophy. Um, your flight departs in a few days from the coastal airport. The easiest way down to the coast from here is via Tobogan. I think that's a playground thing, no? Tobogan party. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like, I remember it. Tobogan is a simple sled traditionally used by children. It is also a traditional form of transport used by the Innu and Cree of the Northern Canada. Fun. Yeah, so it's like a sled. Okay. Uh, the easiest way down to the coast from here is via Tobogan. The shopkeeper at the North Pole Tobogan rental shop is having a bad day. Something's wrong with our computers. We can't log in. You ask if you can take a look. Their password database seems to be a little corrupted. Uh-oh. Some of the passwords wouldn't have been allowed by the official Tobogan corporate policy that was in effect when they were chosen. Actually, this story is a typical... Uh, uh, it can happen in, in uh, real life as well. Uh, that apps get built, uh, SaaS apps mainly, and then they just, uh, they just wing it in the beginning, but then a few years or a few months later, they decide to uh, enforce stronger password securities and then the older passwords don't work anymore because they're uh, enforced in the front end. Uh, it happened to me at the previous company I worked, so that's fun. It's a real life uh, example here. To try to debug the problem, they have created a list, your puzzle inputs of passwords. According to the corrupted database and the corporate policy when that password was set, hmm. All right, for example, suppose you have the following list, 1-3, uh, A, A, B, C, D, E, D, C, D, E, F, G, C, 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 C. Okay, let's see what, uh, what this means. Each line gives the password policy 
and then the password. The password policy indicates the lowest and highest number of times a given letter must appear for the password to be valid. For example, 13A means that the password must contain A at least one time and at most three times. Interesting. So the second light doesn't meet the criteria because there's no B uh, in the password. And the third one, I see, let me see how many C's are in here. Nine. So that, that fits. So the first and the second doesn't, and the uh, and third, but the second one, the second password doesn't fit the criteria. Uh, in the above example, two passwords are valid. The middle password is not. Yep, exactly. It contains no instance of B, but needs at least one. The first and third passwords are valid. They contain one A or nine C, both within the limits of their respective policies. How many passwords are valid according to their policies? Okay, this doesn't sound too hard. Hey Lars, welcome. Yeah, you've done day two. Awesome, awesome. So if I get stuck anywhere, I'm sure you'll be able to um, hint, me, uh, hint me to the solution. Thanks for joining in. Um, so this does not seem that particularly hard. Um, large input, different password policies, numbers ranging from 1 to 20 or so, and then it's each password policy has one letter, so that's, that's easy. We don't have to deal with multiple letters or so. Uh, so, and then we use the colon to delimit the actual password from the policy. We'll split by that. And then we'll use the space to delimit the, uh, the, yeah, the number of occur occurrences and the letter. And we'll do a find and uh, okay. I think uh, let's try this approach. Um, back to the terminal, VS Code, new folder. We'll put our solution in here. Let's grab the input. Save as day two. We've got our input in here. I always remove the last line because there's a new line at the end. Okay. We'll create an index.js. Let's copy the setup part from yesterday's solution. So we have that. Um, mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that works. We're not dealing with expenses here though. So let's rename that. Well, what is um, password database? Well, yeah, we'll just say password database. Awesome. Um, oh, it's a rename symbol. Always good to give descriptive names to uh, whatever variables you're working with to help to save yourself some headaches down the road. Um, so we're splitting by new line, which is good. And then we don't need to uh, typecast the uh, strings to integers. Uh, but let's new lines and then I think that's good yeah okay we'll go with uh, the part one we'll put it in here the solution for part one let's um, oh I need to rename this one as well password database um, actually I'm gonna passwords okay uh, entry I'm gonna name this password entries yeah it's gonna be an array uh, it's gonna be an array and what we need to do first now is um, let's uh, yeah let's just go through each uh, item so password entries, we'll refactor later. Uh, for each entry, we have an entry here. We need to split this entry by the column. And then the second item is gonna be our password. I think, and 
uh, split by colon org. Yep. Great. And the first item is going to be um, policy. Yeah. Policy. Okay, so what we're doing here, we're splitting the line by the column. So we're going to get two items. The, uh, the first part here, oh, wait, 4 5 space R, R, and the second part. And we are using array destructuring to put each part in an array. So the first part is going in, to into a variable. Uh, the first part we are assigning it to a policy uh, named variable and the second one to the password. Um, I think we'll need to trim the password as well because we're going to have the space in the beginning. Uh, and so let's just... Um, hmm. I wonder if I can just... Ah, no, I can't. Um, then I'll, I'll need to use let's. Uh, password equals password trim. I think the stream a function. Why, why don't I have IntelliSense? And let me just uh, pull up. I always have to look at the basic stuff. It is awesome. Yeah, I think it's a new addition to the language specification. Trim, great. And uh, what we need to do with the first one is we need to split it with the space so we can so we get the do we need to though yeah do we yeah let's do that anyway yeah we'll do that as well um we're going to have we'll do the same thing as we did above we'll split it policy the policy by space and we're going to get the first part is going to be number of Occurrences or something like that. Second part is going to be letter. Letter, yeah. Number of occurrences. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we have that for each entry. Um, now, we... Uh, what's, uh, let's go back to the challenge. It says, how many passwords are valid? Okay, so I need to find the valid passwords. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to, we have the letter, we have the password, we count how many times the letter comes up in the password, and then we validate it against the policy, uh, if it's within the bounds of uh, whatever number is in here. Is that is that something I can easily do in code? Count number of R's in... The password is that does JavaScript have a count um, method? Mm, I don't think so because mm. I don't want to count them by hand because that's well, I'll, I'll have to if eventually if there's no other way. But um, mm -hmm. let's see a different approach. Maybe I can think of something easier to code. Um, what if? I say, hmm, and I'll need to count them anyways. If I go the other way around and I say, okay, uh, if R is um, uh, occurs less than four or more than five times in the password, then we, or within four or five times, then we accept it. But yeah, we need to count them in anyways. Okay, so we need to count the number of occurrences of a letter in a given string. Uh, wait, reg, regex to the rescue. We can we use regex for this? Uh, oh, we can use the regex validation. Yes, awesome. We'll do that. Uh, wait, wait. Okay, we'll do a match. Can we use match? Mm, we can. Mm, yep, we can. Awesome. We'll uh, actually, you know, it's much easier. If, because uh, I'm seeing, well, where is it? Length. Well, that's a different approach. I could also replace anything in the string that's not the letter, and then just count the, the, the length of the string. That would be actually pretty easy to do. Let, let's go that approach. Um, replace, string replace, or string replace. Uh, I, I think I need to use replace all. 
uh, that is available in uh, node 14 no 15 I, I wrote an article about what's uh, in node 15 replace all mm. Where is replace all? There isn't. Okay, we'll have to use just uh, regex. Um, we can do this. Regex is always uh, I'm I'll always pull up regex uh, 101. Is it called? Uh, to help me write regex because it's uh yeah I have trouble writing regex. It's uh, not intuitive at all. Okay, uh, we'll do that. So. Let's we have the password. Password re replace regex goes in here. Um, replace anything that's not R. We'll give the global flag everything, anything that's not R. So I guess uh was the negation token, general token, single character, character accept. Anything not R. I think I can do this. Anything that's not R. Uh, wait. This, of course, needs to be. Uh, can I use string substitution here? This, of course, needs to be the letter. Uh, no, this is not. This ain't gonna work. Uh, regex is a. Oh, I, I don't think I've ever done this. Use variable in regex. Because regex isn't a string. I, I can't use template string. You can dynamically create a regex replace. Oh, I see. Yeah, but I... Uh, Okay, I can do that then. Um, new regex. And I think inside here, I can use a template string, if I'm not mistaken. And therefore, uh, the letter is going to be uh, bars in here. We'll have to debug this, but I think this should work. And then, um, yeah, let's just, whatever, all, all occurrences. Mm. Let's console log, good old console log debugging. Okay, let's see what's going on in here. Regex is not defined. What? Oh, regex. Mm -mm -mm. So we get the passwords. At least the uh, the parsing we're doing a few lines earlier is working, but uh, it's not replacing our. I'm just going to const regex. I'm going to console log the regex in here. Yeah, thank you, Lars. I was uh, a bit late reading the your uh, catch of my typo here. Uh, okay, let's remove this console log and do it again. Mm, okay, yeah, I need to remove the uh, regex notation here. This looks good. Okay. Um, Let's see again how this works. Um, bu -bu -bu. I'll just uh, keep the uh, regex expression in a variable. Something it writes. Yeah. Yes, we're there. Awesome. That's good. Uh, wait, where's my here? Okay. okay. So we have what we want. Let's call back up. We have. Mm, we don't. What's the G? Oh, that's global. Uh, why is it? Uh, how does? 
Wait, I don't need a global flag here. Oh, I see. So let me. Okay, this should work. Okay, great, great. We have some empty passwords left over here. Okay, so now we have the number of occurrences of that letter which we need to test against the policy. Uh, what we can do now is um, we have the policy. Let's see how the policy looks like. We need to figure out if it's within this range. Um, we can do the length of the string. We'll get the number, and uh, we'll need to split. We'll need to split this policy with the dash, and then we need to parse. Uh, and then we're gonna get two strings, and we need to parse those strings into numbers. And we're going to get two numbers, and then we can actually say uh, we can do. Yeah, if it's bigger than or or uh, smaller than. So let's do some extra parsing of number of occurrences here. Uh, this is starting to look a bit messy. Let me see policy password. Policy splits. Okay. We can say policy stuff here and password stuff in here. Just uh, okay. Uh, number of occurrences. Number of occurrences uh, 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 split by dash, and then we need to map those in a number, both values to a number, and then we can assign them to lower bound and upper bound. Will this work? Um, let's do a console log in here as well. I should really have a shortcut for a macro for like, okay, this variable console log it. I don't have to type console log every time. Um, uh, let's remove this console log and see what's going on. Yeah, this looks good. So we have the lower and upper bounds and uh, Now we can just uh, yeah. Why not? Why don't we filter? Why don't we say like this? Valid passwords, and then we're going to filter the valid passwords. So then at the end we can count how many of them they are. So instead of for each, we'll use a filter, and the filter needs to return true for the ones that we want to keep and false for the ones that we want to discard. Um, so in here, we want to say return return if um, mm, I have to do this in a new line, I think, but uh, password length, yeah, let's uh, const here, a lower bound, upper bound, um, this variable name, uh, actually, uh, this is better, I want to use this variable name here, number of occurrences, and this is just the length of the string. Since uh, we removed all the other letters, um, so this is this variable. So I have to rename this uh, variable oh wait, to something else uh, that's actually more descriptive. Uh, we have so we have a policy. What what is actually this is the policy? This is the letter. What, what are we doing? This four or five uh, passwords. Did, did they, what did they say in here? Each line, password policy, the password, the policy, lowest and highest numbers of times, um, lower, upper bound. I'll just name this to bound pair, bound pair, pair of bounds. Yeah. Um, okay, number of occurrences. Then, if, if, uh, number of occurrences 
is um, bigger than the lower bound and smaller than upper bound or equal because it can also be equal and that's fine bigger than on equal now we're equal then we uh, have a valid password and we just return true otherwise we return false and we can um, write a shorthand for this and we just say return this and then we can get rid of the if else is in here okay I think this should uh, I think we were there let's um, let's log the answer to part one and so part one is valid passwords dot length moment of truth 145 Let's see if it's correct. It isn't. It's too low. If you're stuck, okay. Hmm. I think uh, we're off by one or something. Let's uh, let's see what's going on. Let's debug. Uh, uh, let's debug uh, some things and see if we get the. Uh, const is password valid we'll assign the uh, result to a variable and then we're going to console log the uh, yeah the entire entry plus the result and then we'll uh, oh wait we can actually return that that's fine okay and then we can see uh, can manually go through it and see if what's, what's going wrong. Um, false. Uh, but that's not correct because it is indeed valid. Uh, we have x three times and it's within the bound. Okay, so I think we're messing up the lower bound. If number of occurrences is bigger or equal than the upper bound and uh, so the lower bound, okay, we're going to have to log some other stuff as well. Lower bound, upper bound, and um, number of occurrences. Okay, so we have lower bound, upper bound, that's good. Number of occurrences too. Okay, so that's where we're wrong. Um, two, hmm. Let's log the actual replace uh, replaced uh, when we remove the other letters. Okay, so it's removing one letter of the uh, actual uh, letter that we need as well. I wonder why. Um, what is wrong with this regex? I knew regex is gonna bite me. Uh, if uh, chat, if you have any idea, uh, if you're spotting the mistake, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to uh, dig into the code in here. Uh, regex. Okay, uh, we brought up this regex tester. Um, so let's just uh, have in here. I think it's like this. Anything that's not X. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, I see. I see. Um, if I assert at the beginning, wait, anything that's not X needs to be replaced. Okay, so if it's not an X, it needs to be, mm, it doesn't match. What does it do match? Any single character? Nope. That's what I did wrong. The dot should be in there. So uh, the, the, the star in here is a quantifier. And 
it says zero or more of an uh, of an actual thing. Okay, so zero or more of this uh, matches between zero and unlimited times. Uh, X matches the X character literally, and then a single character not present. Okay, so this this should be good. I think this is our solution here. Uh, we need to just remove the dot. Let's try it again. Awesome, that looks good. I think, what's our answer now? 398, I think that's our right answer. Let's give it another try. Oh, great, we did it. We did it. Uh, you just uh, love, uh, digging is part of the fun. You just love uh, watching me solve this, aren't you? Um, but that, uh, that's true, I uh, definitely agree. Um, it's uh, much less fun if you just get uh, hints uh, right away without uh, doing uh, some brain crunching and try to solve it yourself. Okay, I'll remove the console login there. Doing some cleanup. Okay, that's good. Let's go to the second part. Continue to part two. So we have three stars now. Awesome. Part two. While it appears you validated the passwords correctly, they don't seem to be what the official Tobogon corporate authentication system is expecting. The shopkeeper suddenly realizes that he just accidentally explained the password policy rules from his old job. Ah, <laughs> oh, silly guy. At the sled rental place down the street, the official Tobogon corporate policy actually works a little differently. I think that's an uh, occurring theme in Advent of Code that the first part, the, the, the first and second parts of each day are related. The first part is an, is an easier version of the same solution and then the second part builds on top of the first part uh, and it's, it just adds another element that makes it a bit more challenging that you need to um, account for. Uh, so as we see here, we're going to probably have to reuse some stuff from the first part uh, but the, the policy is going to be different. I think the policy is not going to be as easy. Maybe you get an extra letter or something. Let's see. Um, each policy actually describes two positions in the password, where one means the first character, two means the second character, and so on. Be careful. Top Gun corporate policies have no concept of index zero. Okay, so we need to account for that as well because in programming everything starts at zero when you index exactly one of these positions must contain the given letter. Other occurrences of the letter are irrelevant for the purposes of policy enforcement. Okay, so given the same example list from above, um, this one is valid. Position 1 contain, contains A and position 3 does not. This one is invalid because neither position 1 nor position 3 contains B. This one is invalid because both positions 2 and position 9 contain C. Okay, so let me read this again. Um, where 1 means the first character, 2 means the second character, and so on. Okay, exactly 1. Okay, so if we find... If you find this letter in either here or in either this or this position, then it's valid. If we find it in both positions or none of these, it's not valid. I think that's how I understand the, uh, the puzzle. Other occurrences of the letter are irrelevant. Yeah, so we can disregard this letter in any other occurrences of this password. Uh, we don't need to take that into account. How many passwords are valid according to the new interpretation? Uh, we still have the same puzzle input. Okay, so we'll have to reuse some of the stuff. I'm just going to copy paste. Um, let's rename this one valid passwords part one. And I'm going to copy paste what we have here. Some folks get fancy and make helper functions for uh, some of this so they don't have to repeat the code and then reuse the helper functions. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just, I think this takes up too much time. Uh, I don't care too much about it anyway. Um, I think it's more interesting to try and optimize uh, uh, 
the solution if we have some time over at the end but uh, I'm fine with copy pasting now for now uh, okay so let's see what we need for the second solution we still need to split uh, the entry into policy and password uh, for the policy, uh, well, for the password, we need to trim it. To trim it, that's good as well. The policy it has a letter and pair of bounds. Okay, so that's not pair of bounds anymore, but it's um, pair of positions. Okay, let's uh, rename this one to. Uh, nope. Um, pair of positions. Um, and then we just call this position one, position one, and position two, position two. And uh, the parsing here is still correct. That's good. Um, so we won't be needing the regex anymore because that messes up with the string and we actually need to uh, work with the original string. So we are going to get rid of this and this is password valid. We're going to keep this uh, variable though. Okay, so let's see. Um, uh, 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 we have the letter, position one, position two. How are we gonna go about this? Um, if let's say hmm, can i use the method find to find i i know i can do index off and but i want to use functional program as much as i can so it's easier and more readable um it was the first uh, so the find method returns the value of the first method in the provided array hmm, okay uh, it doesn't oh find index great Retur uh, returns the index of the first element. Mm, yeah, that works for the first occurrence, but it doesn't help us with the second. We could use slice the array and get rid of the uh, anything up to that part and then use no, because then we might get any occurrences in between. We just care about, well, actually we just care, why don't we just do an index lookup? That's so much easier. Uh, yeah, sometimes overthink it. Yeah, so we just do if, um, let's just go straight in here. Mm -hmm. Password. If password, so it's, uh, they don't do index zero, so I need to, 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 to do minus one. Okay, position one minus one, if we find something, Oh yeah, if it's equal to letter, uh, no, if it's equal to letter, or, um, I don't think or is going to help us in here. I'm, I'm going to deal with this a bit in a bit now. Uh, position 2 minus 1 equals to letter. Um, okay, so what this does is if we find it in once, if either of the two is true, then we have a valid password. But if both of them are true, the password should actually be invalid. But we still get true in here if we use or. Um, I think I can solve this in a one-liner, but it's going to be long and messy. I, I guess I'll just have to, to extract these um, into variables. That's easier. Um, position one, position two, letter at position one, and then letter at po at position two. Yeah, that's going to make our conditional expression a bit shorter because otherwise it's gonna be, get pretty long and hairy and messy. Um, so if letter at position one equals wait equals letter and um, or letter at position 
to equals letter. I feel this is such a simple conditional, but I don't. Why is it so hard to just say, hey, if it's okay, I just need to account for the fact that if both are true, we need to return false. Hmm. I can do an and. Let's wrap this in parentheses. Uh, if, hmm, how can we do this? But uh, okay, think we have. So if both of them are false. This is going to return false, and then these needs, this needs to return false as well. Uh, 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 uh. If one of them is true, this is going to return true, the first part, and the second one part needs to return true as well. Uh, I'm doing this. I don't. I don't like what I'm doing here. Okay, let's think about it a different way. Um, let's say if that. Um, I can use if else's. That would work. I, I'm gonna go with that. Um, I'm gonna go with with if if else's because I think a one liner is. Uh, is not something I can wrap my head around now. So I'm going to say um, first, uh, if there's no, hmm, if letter at position one does not equal to letter and or, no or, or letter at position two does not equal letter, then uh, then we don't have a valid password. So is password valid? False. Else if um, if so, what we can do is if it doesn't find if the letter it's not in position one or two, then it, we uh, we don't have a valid password. We can also do if letter is we do find the letter at position one or character. What did, what did, what did, how do you uh, call it in the US? Do you say letter or character? Because letter can also be an actual letter that you can send by po via post. Uh, as a European, it's using letter, it's more intuitive. So that's why I'm doing that. Um, we can also say if it finds a uh, letter at position one and two, then we also have uh, an invalid password. And for everything else, the password is valid. Okay. So I'm sure we can optimize this in a more readable way. I think this is fairly readable though. But uh, I'm sure we can optimize it uh, later. But I think uh, we should be good now to go. Let's see. Zero. No, something's wrong. Obviously, there must be some valid passwords. Um, OK, let's do some debugging. Console log. Let's print the entry and then letter at position one, letter at position two. Might be something with off by one. What are we doing here? Let's see where the bug is. Uh, three, one, two, three, Q, five, M. So that's good. Uh, what's letter? Letter, let's, let's print the letter as well. X, all oh, right, I see. That's, uh, oh no, yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good, because we need to, yeah, so, uh, Character is X, uh, Q and M, 
so there's the last one should be invalid uh, 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 um, let's move this down here so we can also log this password valid what does it return for the last one false that's good oh it's actually false for all of them okay so let's find a true one uh, a valid password um, B uh, so we're looking for B and 1719 it does find one okay so this one needs to be this one is a valid password um, why does it say false because um, it goes in either either of these two conditionals so letter position one so that's B uh, does not equal letter does not equal letter uh, that's false Letter position two. Uh, wait a second. Letter at position one. So first letter, first character that we find. Okay, so B. This. Uh, why is this so tough? I'm sure it's. I'm having too much problem with this. Well, it should be super easy. Um, okay, so what are we saying here? Let's let's grab this one. This one is easy to understand. If we find the character at in the first and second position, then we don't have a valid password. If we so, what this needs to say is that if we don't find the the character at all, so if the character at if the letter position one does not equal the character, and this needs to be an and, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, this needs to be an and, and it doesn't find it at the second character. Yeah, all right, I think I think we're uh, good, 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 good. Five six two. Let's uh, clean this up a bit. Five six two. All right, the moment of truth. 562 valid passwords. Is that correct? That's right. Yes, we did it. Uh, in 50 minutes or so. Oh, took me longer than I should have, actually. Yeah. Yep, we did it. Another gold star. Return to the calendar. See how the ASCII art looks. Hmm. I'm not sure what it's going to look like. So as the event progresses, 25 days, uh, each day reveals an ASCII art, so it's like an image type of thing written in characters, and uh, it's related to the puzzle. So since we're going to a tropical island, I'm thinking of a palm tree or an island or something, something related. Uh, so we have the first um, three parts, but we can't really tell what it's going to look like yet. Uh, so that's fine. Yeah, we completed it. I'm going to, um, let's see how much we have left. We have eight minutes left until we're uh, done with the hour. Um, any, do you guys have any optimization suggestions? Uh, I'm actually gonna have a look at your uh, solution, Lars, and see what you came up with and see if it's, uh, if it's similar to uh, what I did. So Lars is, uh, has been uh, watching my stream yesterday as well. And he shared uh, uh, he shared his repository and where he posts his solutions, which I start here. It is, and uh, I'm curious to see what uh, you came up with if you had. And Lars is writing the uh, answers in ABAP, which stands for I've never heard about it before, but ABAP programming language stands for Advanced Business Application Programming. And he's doing some nifty, nifty stuff and transpiling this into JavaScript, um, which I would never dare to do. So uh, yeah, let's see what uh, I think I can. It looks pretty readable. Indexes in ABAP start at one. Interesting. Yeah, that's another difference with JavaScript. We need to take into account that uh, I think what was it yesterday? Uh, you can add strings in ABAP, and that's fine. Uh, numbers as, as strings. Uh, and JavaScript, you don't. You need to parse them first. So, 
uh, yeah, language intricacies to be aware of. Okay, let's see what uh, the first method, part one. Um, value output. Oh, can you direct me to the answer? Oh, I think it's in here. Implementation, great. Method, parse, part one. Okay, here's the answer for the first part. Um, so what are you doing here? Your um, find, you're looping to the passwords. I think you parsed them before, yeah. Find all occurrences of the letter and you count them. Okay, so you count all occurrences and then you store the lower and upper bounds in variables. Oh, you can do it between in ABAP. That's nifty. Yeah, yeah, you can't do that in JavaScript. So you have to do like lower than or bigger than, but you have the between. Uh, uh, that's nice, that's nice. Uh, so if, uh, yeah, if the uh, character count is between min and max, then Oh, and you're also keeping track of how many uh, track of, uh, of how many valid passwords you have. So then you add uh, valid passwords with one, and then you output it. Okay, yeah, that's a slightly different approach because you can make use of in of the between keyword, which I don't. And uh, I'm using regex to actually get rid of the uh, uh, unwanted characters. And well, you also have find all occurrences of which we don't in JavaScript. I had to, here I had to do an index off and then, um, yeah, because I don't have a count method in JavaScript. So that had, would have been more verbose if I had to do this, so I have to take this approach. But that's nice. Um, seems ABAP is easier if you know, uh, if you know ABAP, uh, since it's easier to solve, it has these uh, useful functions methods. And the second part, you um position if abp does not count from uh, index from zero why are doing minus one uh anyway <clears throat> i had a lot of trouble with typing in the transpiler so introduce some temporary variables all right um so yeah you're getting the position and then you're getting the value at that position And then you're saying if it equals and does not equal, or if it does not equal and it does equal, then it's valid. Oh yeah. So that yeah okay. So I see uh, that's a that's a good solution as well. Um, what I'm doing is I'm going through the in, invalid uh, conditionals first, and then I say if it's not valid, then it must have to be valid. And it's not valid when it's uh, apparent. If the character appears in both positions or it doesn't appear or oh, here it doesn't appear in any of the position or it appears in both and then we just say it's valid your approach is saying okay I'm just gonna look at what's valid and it's valid if it appears in the first but not in the second or it does not appear the first but it does in the second so yeah that's a good approach so um, and then you say you count up the valid uh, times again and then you output that. Yeah, what I'm doing instead is I'm using filter. So I'm just keeping the valid passwords and then I'm in an array and then I'm just doing the length of array to find out how many of them there are. Yeah, okay, that's uh, nice. Uh, oh yeah, so string offsets do start at zero, but indexes do not. Okay, thanks for uh, letting me know. Um, all right, um, I think that's it for the first, for the second day. It was fun. I'm going to push the uh, the solution uh, to my repo so you can have a look later on if you want. Uh, get status, what do we have here? Uh, get commit. Uh, day two solved. Let's put a emoji in here. I love commits with emojis. Uh, where's it? Oh, well, I can't have an emoji. Okay, day two solved, exclamation mark. I'm going to push it to the repository. Uh, let me link the repository in the chat so you can find it as well. Here we have day two. Um, 
I'll link the repository in the chat in case you folks want to have a look of my solution. And um, uh, yeah, that's about it for the second day, I think. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. Um, if you want to stay in touch, um, if you're on Twitter, uh, add me, uh, underscore maximization is my profile. Uh, you can uh, message me there if you have any questions or just want to talk about uh, the event. I'm also uh, in the uh, Party Corgi uh, Discord group. If you uh, have never heard about Party Corgi, uh, is anyone in the chat uh, uh, from Party Corgi? Uh, if not, uh, it's a fun community. Uh, uh, on Discord uh, of creators and developers and uh, uh, several other folks are actually streaming their solutions as well in different languages. Um, but go to partycorgi.com and then you'll find the invite link for the Discord channel. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's also a community of streamers as well. I should add myself in the list. But I know, for example, that a friend of mine, Chris Biscardi, He's uh, streaming his solutions in Rust, and he's doing them a little bit later than uh, than I am. Uh, but you can see here he had he streamed his uh, solutions in Rust uh, from previous day. It's fun to have a look and see uh, what uh, yeah what other uh, streamers uh, other people come up with in different languages. So if you want to hang out, and uh, that's also where I. Uh, where you can find me in the Party Corgi Network. So yeah, that's about it. Thank you for joining, Lars. Uh, I hope to see you tomorrow. Uh, you're from Denmark. I saw you on your Twitter. Yes, so it's morning for you as well. Have a nice day. Uh, I'm not sure if you're going to work or you're just uh, on holiday, day off. Whatever you're going to do, I wish you a wonderful day. And uh, to everyone else as well. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow, day three, same time, 10 a.m. Central European time. Uh, and uh, looking forward to see what day three is going to look like in uh, Advent of Code. The story continues. Thank you very much for joining. Bye-bye.